the hawkish monetary policies of central bankers pushed the global bonds into their first bear market ever last month. The Bloomberg Global Aggregate Total Return Index of Government and Investment Grade Corporate Bonds has dipped over 20% below its 2021 peak, the biggest drawdown since its 1990 inception. While bear markets are common in equities, they have been unheard of in bond markets as the asset class emphasizes reliable returns over a period of time. Bond prices are inversely related to bond yields. And as money market watchers factor in higher interest rates, especially after last Friday's solid jobs report in the US, yields on US treasuries are set to climb further. They are already near 4%, their highest level since October 2008. In comparison, yields were around 1.7% at the beginning of 2022. Back home too, analysts are cautious on the returns expected from Indian government securities. However, the sell-off in Indian bonds hasn't been as cruel as seen in the global markets. From their last year's peak, the Nifty 10-year GSEC index had fallen around 5.5% till June this year. The index climbed again only to resume the sell-off mid-September onwards. As per Sujan Hajra of Anand Rathi shares and stock brokers, a lot of factors are going against the Indian bond market. Elevated inflation, continued monetary tightening by the RBI, sharp reduction of system liquidity, and record high bond holding by banks, which may result in subdued demand and or bond sell-off by banks, are key overhangs. That said, analysts believe the marginally lower than expected H2 FY23 borrowing program will provide some relief to the bond markets. Moreover, relatively less hawkish Indian monetary policy, steady buying of bonds by banks despite excess holding, much better tax receipts could support the domestic bond markets on a relative basis. Economists see yields on 10-year GSEC rising to 7.5% to 8% by March 2023. Against this backdrop, how should fixed income investors shape their portfolios? So wherever in the portfolio of an investor there is duration present, whether it is through buying uh, long-ended corporate bonds, GSECs, or being invested in uh, mutual funds which run a very high um, uh, modified duration, the idea would be to actively cut exposure to the same. Uh, the second uh, step would be to um, avoid volatility uh, and this could be done by not being exposed uh, to uh, open-ended schemes um, and open-ended investments uh, and having a much of a lesser MTM impact in your uh, bonds and to not run leverage positions uh, through margins uh, if the investor is investing in international bonds. Uh, to sort of uh, try to book profits or cut losses as the case may be. Incrementally look at allocating to uh, FMP products as well as uh, uh, looking at close-ended uh, solutions per se. Um, the third uh, uh, step would probably be to uh, evaluate accrual as a strategy because that's where once you go underweight uh, duration, uh, there's always an opportunity to, to make uh, a uh, decent profit through accrual strategies. And given that um, curves are inverted, um, uh, you know, there's a good opportunity to uh, go ahead and make accrual uh, income into the, uh, into the portfolio. Irfan of Vivriti AMC suggests investing in corporate bonds of companies having strong domestic linkages or those that have less exposure to imports or currency fluctuations. In a nutshell, while the downside risks outweigh the upside possibilities in bond markets, the outlook of domestic GSEC look relatively robust versus most global peers. On Tuesday, investors will react to Q2 earnings of TCS and I oil prices, bond yields and IPO of Traxon Technologies. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.